Todd, it is so good to see you. Yes, you too. I can't believe it's been almost a year. Whoa, you are all dressed up. No, actually, it's been a long time for you. This is actually how we dress when we're on campus. But I have good news for you. We found out a secret trick to making you campus ready. Really? What's the secret trick? Basically, what you do is you walk into a closet in your home, close the door, yell out, we are BC. And when you walk out, you'll be campus ready. Would you like to try it? Are you kidding me? It's that easy? Yep, it's safe, tried, and true. Um, okay. Do you really think this is going to work? Um, Todd, this doesn't look right. Um, hmm, weird. I've never seen that before. Um, do you know how to reboot your closet? No. Can you even do that? Not sure. So let's just try it again, go inside, and this time really yell out, We are BC. We are BC! Whoa! This is amazing! One question, Todd. Can this thing do my makeup too? <laughs> no, sorry, it just works on the clothes. Well, there you have it. Another positive about returning to campus. Now you can use the power of We Are BC to get ready for work. And with that, let's get started with day three of closing week. Now remember, be active on the chat and let's get this party started. The past 12 months have been an important time in Renegade history. Our students, campus, and community have overcome an incredibly challenging time. And it has made me think a lot about resiliency. Not just how we find it in ourselves, but how we can empower others, and how we're stronger when we're united. It is through times like these that our campus shines as a beacon of hope and resiliency throughout the community. Bakersfield College welcomes all students who apply, no matter who they are, where they come from, or what they've been through. All the programs, every initiative, and every support system has been created to help BC students, and in turn, create a stronger, more successful, and resilient community of future leaders. Every program, each initiative, and every support system at BC was created with student success in mind. Not only does BC strive to help every one of our students reach their educational career goals, but we're also laying the foundation to build a stronger, more prosperous and resilient community. We know that when we raise the bar for our students and build a safety net of support systems to help them thrive, they always rise to the occasion and reach levels that we never even anticipated. As we close this chapter on the current academic year and move forward, know that our campus, our students, and even our greater community has grown stronger and more resilient. Also, congratulations to Dr. Christian on your appointment as KCCD's next chancellor. Our district is confident great things will emerge, guided by your determination, insight, knowledge, imaginative spirit, and compassionate heart. Over the past year, we have become a better version of ourselves, stretching the innovation to serve the needs of our students. And for that, I'm grateful for each and every one of you. It's an exciting time to be at BC and part of the Kern Community College District. Have a great summer. And we are BC. Humanity found its first glimmer of hope during one of the darkest moments of the COVID-19 pandemic last December when the FDA granted authorization for the first vaccine in the United States. At Bakersfield College, we realized how important it was to get as many Kern County residents vaccinated against COVID-19 so that we could turn a corner towards recovery from this crisis as a community. Our next President's Leadership Award winners were instrumental in putting together the vaccine clinics we held throughout Kern County, both as walk-up clinics on our campuses and in rural Kern County, as well as several mass vaccination drive-through clinics in the stadium parking lots. Christine Peterson's article in the Bakersfield Californian after the first mass drive-through clinic on March 21st 
said it best. They're not celebrating at Disneyland quite yet, but you would have thought those at Bakersfield College on Sunday had already arrived at the happiest place on earth. Thanks to the efforts of these two individuals leading BC's COVID vaccination team, as well as dozens of volunteers and our community health partners, Kern County has gradually gone from the most restrictive purple tier to the orange tier with one foot in the door towards the yellow tier as we begin to approach herd immunity. It took countless hours of coordination, several late night phone calls and negotiations, and a whole lot of heart to ensure our community had access to these much needed vaccines. Let me start by highlighting Dr. Nikki Demania for making the campus community invested in the future of Kern County and securing individuals to work at the vaccine clinics. Nikki personally coordinated with several local and state authorities to ensure BC Student Health and Wellness Center was recognized as a vaccination site early on, helping us be ahead of the curve and ready to serve. Filling appointments with only 24 hour notice was not an easy task, yet he jumped in and made it happen because that's what we do here at BC. Throughout every step of the process for planning these vaccine clinics, Nikki brought people together with his uniquely playful personality and meticulously attended to details. Norma Rojas Mora also deserves special recognition for working with the governor's office and community health organizations to secure supplies of the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines bringing together partners to secure vaccines and support for BC from state and local organizations was a top priority. Our partnerships are stronger than ever, whether it was with political leaders, community organizations, healthcare providers, and yes, even the governor's office. All have played a role in the vaccine rollout and the list just continues to grow because that's what BC is all about. Since coming to BC, Norma has helped us strengthen and build new relationships with dozens of government and community organizations while bringing the amazing work of all that you do every day to the forefront. As of last week, we have distributed over 5,000 vaccine doses at all of our clinics, and we will be serving hundreds more at upcoming walk-up and drive-through clinics. I've heard so many compliments over the last few weeks from the leaders throughout the community about how well organized and efficiently we run our clinics. And that has everything to do with the leadership of our vaccination team. Thank you, Nikki Damania. Thank you, Norma Rojas Mora, for your tireless efforts to get the people of Kern County vaccinated. When we look back at this moment years from now, with the COVID-19 crisis in our rearview mirror, people will still remember your efforts and the efforts of our many volunteers as one of the first actions that helped Kern County and the Central Valley recover.
Hey there, renegade colleagues. Well, we made it. We made it through an entire year of distance learning. And we couldn't have done it without everyone's hard work and participation. So I'd like to start by thanking the administration, classified, and all the faculty, full-time and adjunct, for your dedication and hard work at making this academic year a success for our students. I know it hasn't been easy because I've been at that front line along with all the rest of you attempting to educate students at a distance. So congratulations on making it through a completely unexpected change in the delivery of our education. But what it does show is that through teamwork, we can make things happen. And as we move forward in the upcoming year, I hope our collaboration can continue. Now, this is going to be my last closing day presentation to you. My seven year tenure as Academic Senate President has come to a close. And I'd like, first of all, to thank those officers who have served with me over those last seven years. Victor Diaz, Andrea Thorson, Nick Strobel, serving as Vice President, and Charles Kim, serving as Treasurer, and Matt Garrett as Secretary. I appreciated your hard work and your collaboration to sit and discuss and oftentimes many of the more difficult issues that face our college. I'd also like to thank all of our faculty co-chairs over this period of time who have served on our shared governance committee. And not only do I want to thank our faculty co-chairs, but I want to thank also literally our classified and administrative co-chairs as well. Your ability to have your committees run smoothly over these past seven years has allowed me to look beyond the college and how to make Bakersfield College a better institution. You know, I didn't have to focus on drama on the campus. And that allowed me to focus my attention on district and statewide policies in an attempt to make education better at BC, KCCD, and in the state of California. So I'd like to thank all of those individuals who have worked hard and with me to make BC a better place. As I move forward, I'm turning the reins over and I think we're going to be in good hands. Nick Strobel will be serving as our Academic Senate President. Erica Machado will be the Vice President Paula Parks will be our secretary, and Andrew Bond will be serving as our treasurer. And as I leave this position, just wanted to provide to Nick a few of the things that have made my life easier as Academic Senate President. So I'd like to share with you a little of my experience. First of all, Nick, I want to dedicate you the school phone that was issued to me upon taking over the presidency. And I want to tell everyone the telephone number just in case you need to reach Nick and especially the administration that is coming forth if they need to reach Nick. The number on this is 638-370-2255. Again, that's 638 638- three seven zero two two five five and interestingly enough if you correspond those numbers to the alphabet on your telephone you'll know that reads never call and Nick that's some good advice to you don't let people have your cell phone number they should never call you otherwise you'll have a hard time literally uh, getting anything accomplished. So I'm giving you this phone, Nick, because I think it's important. I'm not too sure who will take on the intern position here at BC, 
knowing now that Sonia is moving down to the district office. If it is Zav, then Nick, I think I need to provide you with two additional items that I've found helpful. First of all, I'm providing you with a sticker for your door. And maybe it's written large enough that Zav can see. Whining is not allowed. No whining, Zav. We take care of business only. And last but not least, I'd like to say congratulations to Sonia Christian for her advancement to Chancellor of KCCD. We appreciated your hard work over this past decade and bringing some both state and national recognition to our college. In essence, in many cases, trying to take a chance on some initiatives. Those are often important steps to take. So again, congratulations on your advancement to Chancellor and to all the faculty, staff, and classified. I wish you health and prosperity. I know we're all getting a 3% off scheduled raise. So there's your prosperity and a great summer. Take care and I hope to see everyone back on campus in the fall. Thanks. While many colleges have struggled to define the classified role in Guided Pathways redesign efforts, Chris Glazier has set the tone. Student success is everyone's business. In addition to excelling in his departmental assignment, Chris is an active member of BC's College Council, holds an officer role in the classified union, and often takes leadership roles in college-wide efforts. A snapshot of Chris's leadership includes the ACCJC site visit, which he co-led all site visit logistics and served as the lead point of contact for all campus volunteers. Commencement. Annually, Chris leads volunteer efforts, trains staff volunteers, and interfaces with the management team to ensure a seamless celebration. Opening and closing all staff professional development days. Chris leads logistics and serves as a primary point of contact for volunteer ushers to ensure safe and successful gatherings of over 2,000 faculty and staff. Chris is known for his commitment to high standards and professionalism in his job performance and in his interaction with his colleagues across campus. As a result, Chris has become a well-respected member of BC's staff, often serving as a resource and source of institutional knowledge to others on campus. Having supported myriad departments on campus, Chris has extensive knowledge of instruction, student services, administrative services, augmented by his service on campus committees, including College Council. When we were in the thick of the educational campaign for Measure J, Chris spent countless hours for months volunteering in the evenings and on weekends. Chris called voters, walked door to door, and created communication materials to make the case for the community to invest in the current community college districts, facilities, and infrastructure. Not surprisingly, Chris quickly became a leading voice in this effort. His ability to organize his community around a common cause ultimately led to a successful bond measure bringing over $500 million to KCCD. Chris is routinely asked to partner with managers on various projects such as the college's initiative to assist Kern County Public Health in the efforts to vaccinate our community. Knowing his meticulous talent for detail and logistical planning, Chris was the ideal partner to open up and manage Kern County's first mass drive through clinic. He knew this was not only the college's mission, but also his responsibility to serve the students and bring resources to our community while giving up his nights and weekends and committing additional time over his current role to ensure the success of each clinic. 
Chris consistently demonstrates a willingness and more importantly, an enthusiasm for Bakersfield College's mission and enacts that commitment through service to students, his colleagues, and to the community. He is eclectic in his passions and hobbies, and it is delightful watching Chris perform in BC's newly formed men's choir. Colleagues, Chris Glazier. Hello there, Renegades. This is Coach Conrad Dahl I'm doing another stretch video for you for closing day. Um, so I'm going to show you different stretches we can do just to kind of keep us mobile from sitting um, in our chairs all day. With COVID going on, a lot of us were sitting on our phones most of the time or at our computer. Um, so here is some stretches we can do um, to kind of help alleviate some of the stiffness we may get from sitting all day. So the first one we're going to do is just some nice, easy neck rotation. So we're going to roll in a circle. Okay, so I'm going to start counterclockwise first, do a good five, six rolls there. Then we're going to switch and we're going to go clockwise. Okay, after we do those, then we're going to go up and down. We want five to six about each way here as well. Get that neck nice and loosened up. That's where we hold a lot of our stress. We get really tight here from looking at our computer screen and our phones all day. And we're going to work on our wrist flexion. So you're going to pull down, hold it for two to three seconds, and then our extensors, we're going to hold up. Okay, again with these, we want to do anywhere from about three to five reps here. Holding it for two to three seconds each. Again, we're going to switch to that other arm. We're going to do the same thing. Okay, holding for about two to three seconds each. Hopefully that helped loosen you up a bit. These are things that you can do, especially if you've been sitting for a long period of time, or maybe you've been doing work on your phone for a long period of time. These are some stretches you can do to help keep you a little bit more mobile and a little more loose, All right? Everybody have a great day. Thank you for being here for closing day. Have a great summer and we'll see you next year. Hey fellow renegades, can you believe it? We made it through yet another year of a global pandemic. On behalf of the entire KCCD Management Association, I congratulate you on finishing this very challenging year, one that we will not soon forget. Despite the obstacles and the challenges we faced this year, I find myself taking exceptional pride in our collective accomplishments that were only made possible because of the college's resilience in the face of turmoil and our adaptive flexibility. And we have our president and her executive team to thank for their leadership in guiding us through these tumultuous waters. When I think about Helen Keller, she had more than sufficient reasons to complain about her circumstances and her sufferings. Yet her legacy leads us along the path of positivity and reminds us that Although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming it. Do you remember Mr. Rogers? He once said, when I was a young boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Is it possible that his mother had Bakersfield College in mind when she shared this advice with her son? While it is easy for us to look at the barriers that confront us, we rejoice in our ability to be the helpers for our community. You know, Bakersfield College isn't just a community college, it is the community's college. We are a beacon of hope for our students, their families, and all the citizens in our entire service area. Not only through education, but also through acts of service. Most recently, hosting a vaccination clinic on our campus, supported by a team of volunteers of faculty, administrators, staff, and our amazing students, serving thousands of community members. This, my friends, is the renegade spirit we celebrate. Congratulations again to each of you. I wish you a wonderful and well-deserved summer break 
and I look forward to seeing you on campus very soon. Hello, I'm Donna Starr, and I'd like to introduce to you Becky Head. <laughs> Hello, I'm Becky Head. It has been my honor to serve as chair of one of the best committees here on campus, the Shirley Tremblay Distinguished Teaching Award Committee. The members of this committee have the task of reading the nomination packets of exemplary teachers and fondly remembering Shirley's standards of excellence. Shirley was known to be a strong lady, ready to help students from the time she arrived at her early morning office hours until she finished classes and reported to a late afternoon committee or board meeting. She stayed informed regarding community college education and always acted on behalf of the students. If Shirley were teaching with us today, she would do her very best to teach statistics and calculus, keep her students engaged during class, and require college level learning. Shirley never failed to speak her mind or roll her eyes, so I believe she would share her suggestions for the fall semester reopening and lead faculty by her example. This year, we have the pleasure of recognizing two faculty members who have priorities that are similar to Shirley's. One of them is said to give time to help students in and out of class. He has developed curriculum to help BC students connect and communicate across their cultures and is described as a positive person who is a true leader. The other awardee is a mentor, guide, collaborator who sings math songs. <laughs> Students said that this professor taught us songs to help us learn the concepts. They still remember some of the songs. Please join me and the new chair of the committee, Donna Starr, in celebrating these two exemplary teachers, Mark Soller, Department of Communication, and Janet Tarjan, Department of Mathematics. So congratulations to Parade Mark wave. Stoller. <laughs> Be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. And change will come to you. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. And change will come to you. Be the voice you want to hear in the world. Be the Shine. 
Over the past several years, it has been a great joy to be able to say that the state of Bakersfield College continues to be strong. Our campus community is academically thriving, financially healthy, growing our student body while focusing on sustainability and wellness. We have accomplished so much. There is so much to be proud of, like streamlining our students' journey through college by providing clear pathways developing a relentless support system for students, assessing learning outcomes, building new buildings to support state-of-the-art learning environments, etc., etc. We have secured the funding necessary to reshape our campus for the next 50 years, and we increased our reserves to support our campus community through trying times. During this time of growth, during this time of prosperity and student success, Stephen Holmes has been the Academic Senate President. As President of the College, I've had the opportunity to work side by side with Stephen as he was at the helm of our academic enterprise. In this leadership role, he engaged diligently in critical discussions that help unify and bring the college together and focus on our collective goals, particularly during difficult times. He is actively engaged in college-related issues at regular board meetings, various committees, and at every college council meeting. His work is thorough, his work is systematic and precise, especially surrounding board policies and the budgets. Stephen always has his eyes set on what is right and what is best for BC students. Through close collaboration with Bakersfield College's executive team, the staff of Finance and Administrative Services and members of the Budget Committee, Stephen has tirelessly worked on the budget allocation model, reviewed funding formulas and other financial issues. Because of his comprehensive work and advocacy for BC, I have been able to speak with confidence that BC's budgets are in excellent hands. Before coming to BC in 1994, Stephen taught political science in Northern California. In the classroom, he has developed engaging curriculum for various political science courses, published course materials for his students, and through all of his efforts, it is clear he enjoys interacting with students, inspiring future political science majors to work hard while striving for their goals. Stephen is a vocal champion for not only his students, but also for the success of the college campus-wide. He's no stranger to any corner of the campus, bringing his humor, quick thinking, love for the college, and a unique laid-back style, that mop of hair complete with shorts and flip-flops, to the classroom, to committee meetings, board meetings, and even commencement. Through it all, Stephen has graciously shared his lighthearted approach and warm spirit everywhere he went and in everything he did. Over the past 27 years, Stephen has worked consistently and diligently in service of multiple generations of renegades, earning much respect and gratitude from those with whom he works and teaches. For him, each day is a new challenge to be tackled with an enthusiastic love for Bakersfield College and its students. The state of the college is strong for many reasons. For one, it is because of the contributions and leadership of Stephen Holmes. It is with such great pleasure that I recognize Stephen with the President's Leadership Award for his work and leadership as it relates to our college, the Academic Senate, the transition during the COVID-19 pandemic, the budget and finances, Measure J, and more. Steve, you have been a gift to me during my tenure 
as the 10th president of Bakersfield College. What can I say about this president's leadership award winner that already hasn't been said? She's my right-hand woman who has been with me every step of the way during my tenure as president, making sure everything is running smoothly behind the scenes. Her organizational skills and eye for detail are unbelievable. She's always able to keep me on track, helping me manage all of my meetings and events and ensuring nothing slips through the cracks. Of course, I'm talking about our favorite redhead, Jennifer Surratt. People say that redheads are bold, maybe wild, confident, and those qualities are definitely true about Jennifer. During her career at BC, in which she served as the CSEA president, administrative support for the Academic Senate, and support for the Vice President of Instruction, and the President's Office, Jennifer has always been fearless, yet having the softest, kindest, biggest heart. Her greatest joy is when she helps a student in distress, and I'm always so inspired when she shares one of those student stories with me when we do our usual debrief at the end of the day. I feel her deep compassion for the student, and the story typically comes with a tear or two. Strong and lighthearted, mischievous and hugely supportive, those may sound like contradictory attributes, but they all come together and make sense once you meet Jennifer. She always brings a playful and warm environment into the office, yet still makes sure that the work gets done with the razor sharp attention to detail. When I think about what leadership means, I can't help but think of Jennifer. The way she talks through issues and concerns with all of our faculty, staff, and community members to find solutions to every problem. The way she is always willing to go above and beyond what is expected of her to ensure that everything is done as best as it can be done and everyone is happy with the results. Jennifer works through extremely complex and sensitive matters with much skill and sensitivity with a caring demeanor that is remarkable and wondrous to watch. She encourages everyone around her to help them achieve their own very best work. When we are on campus, she's always greeting our colleagues and visitors to our office with a smile and that vibrant personality that lights up the room. Jennifer lives and breathes Bakersfield College and her dedication to the campus embodies the renegade spirit. She's always one of the first to share her renegade pride at every event on or off campus. It's hard to imagine any of our major events over the years closing day, opening day, commencement, without Jennifer carefully making sure no stone is left unturned and everything goes off without a hitch. Thank you, Jennifer, for all that you do and all you have done. Oh,
Well, team, another successful closing week. How about if we finish things off with some humor? Todd, what did you have in mind? Um, I was thinking we could share some dad jokes. Uh, really? That's how you want to end this? Okay, here's one. What do you call an airplane that flies backward? Are we really doing this? A uh, receiving airline. That was definitely a dad joke. Okay, what did the plant say when it woke up on Earth Day? Tell us, Todd. This'll be the best day ever. <laughs> okay, fine. What do you call a potato that makes internet videos? Isabel, now you're joining in on this too? A YouTuber. That was actually pretty good. Okay, fine. What did Darth Vader say when his car broke down three miles outside of town? I have no idea. The Empire hikes back. Well, that wraps it up for Closing Week 2021. Thanks again, everyone, for being with us these last few days. Everyone, have a wonderful summer. And we look back to getting as close to normal as possible in the fall. Goodbye.